So have a seat up on your lift. In the studio, we're using blocks here. I, I had a teacher, uh, Eric Small, he wouldn't let us sit on blankets. He had to sit on blocks. Uh, it gives you um, more feedback, more feedback about the evenness. So find that even balance. And if you're at home on blankets, that, that's fine. I'm not saying you have to use blocks, but, but it's helpful to know the difference. It's helpful to be mindful simply about our choices. So if you're choosing a block, why are you choosing it? Oh, it gives me certain feedback. Or here, no blankets are available also. And if you're using blankets or bolsters or cushions, examine it. There's comfort, there are dips. The practice isn't just about sitting, about moving. It's, it's because anger, it's always called it mindfulness and action. So we are taking actions in a mindful way. Sitting is obviously an action. So how can we sit mindfully? How can we make adjustments mindfully as you lengthen from the upper inner thighs out towards the knees, from the upper inner thighs back towards the abdomen? And as you do so, moving the knees, it won't, not a huge movement, so I'm not, not asking for huge adjustment, but as if the knees themselves are moving towards the front of the room. And if you really get that, you may find that the abdomen gently draws in, which is, of course, necessary to support the spine. Notice the, the thoughts as they flow through. Is, is there a, a torrent of thoughts? Is, swirling around, are they slowing down? There's not a right or wrong, and we just want to notice from moment to moment, let the flesh of the inner thighs descend, contract the outer thighs, compact the hips together. Noticing how these actions affect the breath, the mind, Noticing if you're leaning forward or leaning back. Taking the front bottom ribs towards the back body as you lengthen from your hips to your armpits. And your, as your hands gently rest on, on your thighs, and again, this is a subtle, we're not looking for huge movements here, but can you allow the forearms to gently turn in and the upper arms to gently turn out so that they're moving in opposite directions? So there's a little bit more pressure, again, not a pushing, but you can sense more pressure on the inner hand than the outer hand. But that tends to draw the upper arms in. So can you gently, I'm not asking you to jam the shoulders back and down. It's a different instruction. But can you roll the upper arms out as the forearms roll in? Many of you have heard that instruction before, downward facing dog and other poses. It's more subtle here because this is not a weight bearing pose on the hands. But if you really do this, and I recommend one day just doing this for five minutes. It, it changes the experience of the neck shoulder connection. Leave your elbows where they are as you take your palms to touch each other at your chest. If your eyes are still open, let the eyelids close, draw your eyes back and down, resting into your cheekbones. 
up to the palms evenly. Broaden across both the front of the chest and the back of the chest. So your face becomes still. Go in. Let's chant the syllable on three times together. Exhale completely. Deep inhalation. Oh. Lifting your sternum towards the ceiling, lower your chin towards your heart. Release your hands onto your thighs with your palms up. With your eyes closed, raise your head. Gently allow your eyelids to open. Straighten your legs. So you can stay on the block if, if, or, or lift you have. And if you'd like to um, lower the lift, you can. I'm actually gonna, th these blocks make my hands a little wide. So I'm gonna just switch to one block. That's gonna be a little bit better for me. Now, I'm not concerned yet with, with the arms um, being straight. So my, my arms are a little bent here, but with the, the lift, they're, they're, they're getting straighter. But um, as for those that were here the other day and, and Leanne was here and uh, Leanne has long arms. So she had her hands back and I said, try bringing your hands closer to the hips. And I had a private, I was doing a private this morning. So I, I, I didn't see the copy of Light on Yoga. There's the other copy here um, of Light on Yoga that I wanted. So I grabbed the gem for women, which is Gita Iyengar's book which I, I, I hadn't uh, looked at in a while. And um, so I was noticing some of the pictures because uh, I was looking for some inspiration for what to do with, uh, um, for the private this morning. And I noticed in her dandasana, her hands were quite behind her hips. So I thought of Leanne and her arms are quite long compared to her torso. So, and I share this to say, sometimes we even as teachers, we get, we get stuck thinking a right and a wrong based on what our teacher taught us or some classes we're in or the latest teaching because we went to this workshop and the teacher said, do this. Um, but it, it really is your pose. So that reminded me just because I hadn't looked in that book and I only saw the other pictures that her hands were definitely behind her hips in this pose. So, I'm, you know, I don't have that long arms. My hands are behind the hips. And my hands are next to the hips. But she had her hands significantly behind the hips to help her lift the chest. So I give you permission if that's necessary and certainly, and I can show you the picture after Leanne if you want. Um, there are different ways to do these poses. So you have to begin to experiment for you. So hands behind the hips, if you wanna do it how Gita has it in the book, they, they were certainly a little behind. Press the thigh bones down. Lengthen the inner thigh from the inner thigh through the inner knee, through the inner ankle, through the ball of the big toe. And then from the inner thigh back to the abdomen, descend the flesh of the inner thighs and draw the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. So it is the firm kneecap. If you go like this, you shouldn't be able to move your kneecap. We keep the tops of the thighs pressing down. Whether you're on a lift or on the floor, the tops of your thighs press down. If the tops of your thighs are pressing down, you can begin to go ultimately, yes, it's the whole thigh and certainly the center of the thigh, 
I, I focus on the tops of the thighs because so many of us just push the knees down and, and that's not what we're looking for, it's just a jamming of, of the knee. We want the thigh bone itself to begin to move. There's an opening of the back of the knee to be sure. So you can move the top of the calf towards your heels as you move the bottom of the hamstring towards your buttocks. And that opens the back of the knee, what Bika Singer calls the eyes of the knees. And certainly if you do that, the knees go down, but they're going down because there's an opening versus a jamming. And the more downward action you can get with the thighs, the more upward action length you get in the torso. So if the torso lifts up off the hips, there's a lengthening from the hips through the bottom ribs that the waist actually becomes longer. The abdomen does draw towards the spine. And then there's a lengthening through each of the side ribs. And you can use your arms then to help that lengthening. Of course, if you're on a lift and you can't reach, reach the floor, then you, know, you, you, you take, take a block or something underneath your hands, that's fine. And even here, we spoke about the arms. So whether you're on fingertips or flat hands, can you roll the forearms in and the upper arms out at the same time? So in that, you need your fingertips forward to have that action. There is the one that, that will open up with the fingertips back. But the, with the fingers forward, or, or um, yeah, with the fingers facing forward, turn the forearms in and the upper arms out. And of course, if you overdo one, you can't get the other. If you just turn the forearms in, the shoulders come forward. If you just turn the upper arms out, you're, you're on the pinky part of your hand. So we're, we're looking, because there are no new people here, right? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go into such precision with, uh, with someone who's a beginner. But for all of us here who've been practicing, can you begin to get that precision where different parts of your body are working subtly in different ways, bringing you deeper into the core of your body? And this is what begins to create the stilling of the fluctuations of the mind. If you're overdoing one action, the mind will fluctuate because it wants to do it more, 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 more. We'll always go, how can I get more? Either more stretch or more contraction or more open or more whatever it is. So by finding these opposite actions, we can't always go for more. We have to therefore go for deeper. And that begins to still the fluctuations of the mind. Separate your legs. Now you can stay up on a lift if that works for you. For this pose often, sometimes I do a lift, but Today, it's not feeling right. So I'm gonna take the lift out. You can also play with the lift if you're at home and, and uh, you, know, you can just use a one blanket or something. Hands by your hips or, you know, I have to look in the book for this one uh, if, if she has them further back in this one too. But you know, it, it's fine if you wanna have them further back. You, you can see if you take them further back slightly, it begins to lift the side, the side ribs a little bit more. You have a little bit more push against it. Although I caution you that it pushes the ribs forward at the same time. So you have to resist there with the ribs, front ribs back. Now press the thigh bones down. So kneecaps point up, toes point up. Thigh bones down, starting at the top of the thigh bones. If you really have that experience, the top of the thigh bones down, then yes, uh, keep going. Get the center of the thigh down. But then there, there's a lengthening too. So the whole thigh itself lengthens so that there's more flesh touching. There's more flesh touching. the calf lengthens too. So there's more flesh touching. Uh, Abhijita, she just did a, a workshop, was it last week, week before, um, where she spoke about the calf being longer and thinner. It's like a longer and thinner calf. And there's still the opening in the back of the knee. So the top of the calf towards the heel, bottom of the hamstring, 
towards the buttocks, but that kind of goes counterintuitive to lengthening them, right? So you have to lengthen them as you're doing that action. So much going on at the same time. And then using your hands to help you with that lengthening of the side ribs. But remember, the further the thighs go down, the, the more you can begin to lift through the side ribs. And then the arms, rotating the forearms in, rotating the upper arms out. And finding that place in the middle where those actions meet each other. Now, I like doing a twist in this pose, so let's do a twist in this pose. Take your left hand inside of your legs, right hand on the outside of your legs. Use your hands to really lift, right? Twist, the lift is more important than the turn. So lift, inhale, exhale, maintain the lift, and begin to turn. Turn into the right. Drop the shoulders down. Wrap the ribs around. Again, not just turning with the head, but turning with the body. You can even take that on the left side, take that bottom rib, the left bottom rib, move that in and up. But maintain the legs, don't give up the legs just to do the turn. And then maintain the lift on the exhalation, come to center. And then right foot in, left hand out. I mean, do I say foot? <laughs> do the hokey pokey. Uh, right foot, right hand in, left hand out. Lift, turn. One day I'll learn body parts. Wrap the ribs around. Take that right bottom rib and move that in and up. Keep pressing the thighs down as you do so. It's working the kidneys as well. You may, you may find the room getting brighter. In your exhalation, come to center. Don't slouch though. Those hands lift. And let's do that one more time. So left hand in, right leg out. Lift, turn. And then take your left hand on the outside of your right leg. Lean forward slightly. Use that left hand to turn and then come back to upright. Press the thighs down, extend both inner legs, compact the hips, shoulders down. Take that left bottom rib in and up. Maintain the lift, exhale, come to center. Other side, right hand in, left hand out, lift, turn. You turn first. And then you lean forward, take the, the right hand on the outside of the thigh, lean forward. Use that hand to help you rotate. So you're turning as you're leaning forward and then maintain the turn as you come back to upright. Spine perpendicular to the floor. Back, right, bottom rib, in and up. Lengthen the legs, compact the hips. Maintain that lift. Inhale, exhale, come to center. Hands around the shins. I'm sorry, hands inside the knees. Inhale, lift your legs up. Take your feet together. Now for this one, you know, today is kind of open. My hips are more open this week, but I'm still going to use a lift. So I'm going to come back up onto a lift. You can choose. If your knees are very high up, you certainly want to lift. That feels a little bit more open. And today what I want you to do is take your thumb on the inside of the ball of the big toe and it's as if your, your feet are a book. And begin to open that book. 
open. So the front of your foot begins to go towards the floor. The heels ideally stay together, but if you're tight, they're, they're not. My heels, been doing this for about 20 years, my heels on a good day stay together now. But on difficult days, they don't actually stay together. So that's just to say, if the heels are coming apart, don't beat yourself up, but seek them together and seek the bottoms of your feet up. Seek the, the top of your foot down. You want to lengthen from the inner thigh through the inner knee, the knees go out to the sides, and from the inner thigh, upper inner thigh, back towards the abdomen. The more you get that drawing back action, the more you will get the outward action of the knees. And obviously, you're, you're, if you're leaning forward, opening the feet, your spine is not upright, you are indeed leaning forward. This is um, also massaging the ankles as well, right? To get into Padmasana, you need the flexibility of the ankles also. It's the only way that's going to come. And you can really use your hands to do it. Now, yes, you're also drawing the outer knees to the outer hips, compacting the hips together. Open, keep opening. I know it's like, ah, oh, enough of this. Can I just move my hand? No, open, 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 open. Because as soon as you let go, what happens? They, they spring back, right? Open, open, open. And there's a tendency to try and get the toenail of the big toe down by moving the toe itself. So try and get the, the, the toenail down, sure, but, but don't do it from the toe. Do it from, so if this, is the, if this is the ball of the big toe, the opposite from the ball of the big toe, so the top of the foot, the metatarsal there, try and get that down. And then yes, at some point you can release, take your hands by your hips, be upright for a second with open feet. Imagine you're reading a book. Do they read uh, feet lines like they do palm? They have foot readings like they do palm readings? Actually, I know someone, well, I don't, it's a friend of a, a friend, but I've spoken to her. She reads uh, toes, depending on how close the toes are together. And if like the, the pinky toe for some people are tucked under and for some people it's moved away. So depending how tucked it is or whatever, she uh, tells you what's going on with your life, what you have in store for you. So now that you're upright with your hands helping you, are you balanced evenly on your sit bones? How different do each of your hips feel? Yeah, take your hands on the outside of your knees, push your legs together. Hold behind one knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel, straighten the leg. Other leg, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel, straighten the leg. Fingertips by your hips, Dandasana. And release. So come into set up for downward facing dog. So come onto your hands and knees. Of course, if you need a block, a chair, use anything that you need. Shoulders over the wrist, press down through the ball of the first finger and thumb, rotate the upper arms out. Push down through the hands. Turn your toes under, straighten your legs. Forearm in, upper arm out, right? Just as we were working before, but now it's weight bearing, right? So there's a different experience here. Push into hands to lengthen through the inner arms. Inhale on your exhalation, come into downward facing dog. Take the thighs back. Take the chest towards the thighs. Take the sit bones towards the ceiling. Turn those thighs and press those thighs back. Turn those thighs and press those thighs back. Now the work of the legs, we really prep the legs for this. So these are the inner thighs really lengthening. From the inner knee deep up into the body. Lifting the outer knees to the outer hips, compacting those hips together. And the experience of the thighs going back. Now, even we spoke about the backs of the knees, can you take the top of the calf towards the heel, the bottom of the hamstring up towards the buttocks to create more space in the back of the knee. And using the thighs moving back to create more space in your side ribs.
Now look up, walk your feet forward, come into a forward bend. Hold your elbows, have your feet apart. Take your upper arms in line with your ears. Toes forward. And work the legs again, press the thighs back. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Lengthen from the inner knees, deep up into the body, the flesh of the inner thighs moving back. And as the hips go up, let the torso fall over your thighs. Back to downward facing dog. Let your arms go hands on the floor. Walk your feet back. Now use the arms and legs to work together. So push into the hands to move more weight onto the heels, even if the heels aren't pressing. So more weight onto, onto the legs. Push into the hands to move more weight onto the legs. Now pull back with the thighs to take weight off of the hands and move more weight on to the legs. So the hands push onto the legs, the legs pull back onto the legs. Rotate the forearms and rotate the upper arms out. Lengthen from the tip of the first finger all the way up through your side ribs, through your hips, through your sit bones. And press those thigh bones back. Take your abdomen, roll it into your tailbone, press your thighs back even more. And lengthen the groins, release the groins. Open those eyes of the knees, top of the calf down, bottom of the hamstring up. As you take that top of the, the calf down, extend down through the tendon, through the heel towards the floor. Lift yourself up off of your shoulders and wrists. And then look up, walk your feet forward, hold your elbows the opposite way you had them the first time. Ten toes forward, no toes gripping. Thigh bones back. Lift the outer knees, the outer hips. Lift from the inner ankles all the way through the inner knee, all the way deep up into the body. Move the hips towards the ceiling. Now, as you compact the hips together, there's a tendency to grip everything between the hips. Can you compact the hips together, but spread across the sacral band? Spread across the sacrum, spread across the lower back. And on each exhalation, take your chest towards your big toes. Let your arms go, sweep your arms back. Take your hands slightly above your hips, extend your arms back. Extend your thigh, press your thighs back, extend the chest forward, and slowly inhale, come up. Turn to face the front. Feet together. If you prefer feet hip distance apart, take them hip distance apart, it's fine. Press the thigh bones back. Same work of the legs, lengthen. From the inner ankles through the inner knees, all the way up into the body, lift from your outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips together. But even as you compact the hips together, there's a spreading. So the, the upper and the thighs move away from each other. And I don't care if they're touching or not, right? That just depends on your body makeup. But the upper and the thighs move apart as the outer hips move towards each other. And some of you will notice that, that just that action alone immediately changes the experience of the breath in the body, that the breath flows into the different, different parts of the body when you do that, it flows differently. And if you're not noticing that, that's okay too. Front bottom ribs towards the back body, back bottom ribs towards the front body, like into the side ribs. Draw your shoulders down, extend through your arms.
head off. We teach a trikonasana, in a triangle pose. Take your fingertips up by your chest, bend your legs, jump for step. Drop the shoulders. Arms out. Watch the sticking of the front ribs out. So even here, take the front ribs back and the back ribs in. Of course, balancing evenly on the feet. All the leg work, I'm not discounting the leg work. Hopefully there's some memory there so it's happening so that those hips are compacting. The front ribs back, back ribs in. Left foot in, right leg out. Press that back heel, turn the front thigh out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. And keep pressing the back heel as you exhale, come down. And keep pressing that back heel. So the left thigh has to go back to press the back heel. The front thigh turns out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Uh, Leanne, your right shoulder is forward. So take your right shoulder back. The rest of that upper arm turns out. And then let the head go back. Mm -hmm. All right, it's easy to turn the head up if it's back slightly, right? Press with the back heel, reach through your left arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel the feet, other side, right foot and left leg out. Take that, that back thigh back, press the back heel, turn the front thigh out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Compact those hips together. Reach for that back arm as you exhale, come down. Keep pressing that back heel. Don't just press the back knee back to press the back heel, but can you press the back thigh back to press the back heel? So you have to go higher up in the leg. Turn the front thigh out at the same time. Lift both outer knees to outer hips. Yes, extend the arms away from each other. Reach through the up arm, top arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel the feet together, jump or step your feet together. So, so some of you definitely in the room and I can't see as well as at home, but if it happens here, my guess is, it hap is it's happening there. So when you're in the pose, you're tucking the head, but try it here. You're not gonna hurt your head by tucking it. So tuck the head, and then ultimately we, we do look up. So you don't have to, it's fine to look ahead. But tuck your chin and then try and look to the, to the right. And for me, it gets stuck a little bit, right? Do you feel your head getting stuck? You can't really look. And then take your head back. So chin parallel to the floor, and then even take the head back a little bit more, not, not throwing it up, but take the head back and then look to the side. Would you say you can turn your head more when your head is up? So that's what's happening in Uttichi Trikonasana. When you're tucking your chin, you can't turn it up. So from Tadasana, fingertips up, bend your legs, jump for step. Left foot in, right leg out. So, so start, the neck is going to benefit if you change the torso. Of course, torso benefits if you change the legs. So back thigh back, press the heel, turn the front thigh out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips. Take the front ribs back, back ribs in. Inhale, exhale, come down. Now we're going to build everything again. Take the left hand on your hip. So take the back thigh back, press into the back heel. Turn the front thigh out. Do press the ball of the big toe when you turn the front thigh out. So it's the same as the arm, forearm in, upper arm out. Uh, I'm just gonna start calling this the foreleg. Foreleg in, upper leg out. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Now maintain that. Take your front bottom ribs back and your back bottom ribs in so that there's actually a lengthening of the whole torso. So the front bottom ribs back, the back bottom ribs in. So you're not overdoing the front body, nor are you overdoing the back body. Now take the head back slightly. Now I don't care if you look up or not, but if you'd like now with your head back, begin to turn the head up. Begin to turn the head up. 
And if you don't believe me, if you want to check it out, tuck your chin and turn your head and take your head back, turn your head, which turns more. And then extend the arm up. And for those that are moving towards looking up, your, your which arm is up, left? The left arm is up, your right eye looks past your left hand. But if you're not, don't fight it. Don't fight with your neck to get there because something else has to adjust. The torso has to adjust before your neck adjusts in my personal experience. If it bothers your neck, you just look down. Pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Just take your hands on the hip, hips for a moment. Take a breath. We were there for a long time. All right, arms up. Right foot and left leg out. Back thigh back to press the heel. Front thigh out. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. You can even start, start here. Don't start when you're down. Front ribs back, back ribs in. And then maintain that as you go down. And we'll usually lose something in the move. So what we're going to adjust. Take the, the top hand on your hip. Take the back thigh back. Turn the front thigh out. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips. Now without leaning the torso forward or back, take the front ribs back, the back ribs forward. It is still as if you're leaning against the wall. So both shoulder blades equally touching your imaginary wall. Not that the top shoulder blade is further back than, than the bottom. They're equally touching the wall, imaginary wall. You can practice it against the wall. Front ribs back, back ribs in so that you're lengthening that's creating length in the torso. Now take your head back slightly. And then if you'd like, begin to turn your head up and extend your arm. Now it'd be left eye looking past the right arm. But again, it depends on, on the makeup of, of your body. And honestly, some days I get there, some days it's not there. I just look ahead. Or if it's a bad neck day, which most of you know I still have sometimes, I look down. Now you can take it even a little further back. Take your head further back. That's it. And now begin to look up. Yeah. See that? Pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Jump for step your feet together. Tadasana. We're going to do the pose again. Um, all right, come down, come down onto, onto your um, hands and knees. What you do with your arms can free up your neck. Now we've done this work. I'm doing the same work we did before. It's the same down facing dog work, same work we did where the forearms are going in and the upper arms are going out. So forearms in, upper arms out. And you have to find that place in the middle. Because this is what we're going to do the pose one more time and we're going to add this part of it. So I really want, I'm, I'm trying to etch the memory. Well, this is good for your shoulders anyway. But in addition to that, I'm trying to etch the understanding into your body. All right. So keep that understanding because that's what the bottom arm is going to do. So come on up. It's, if you don't have a block, don't worry. But if you have a block, it's a little, it, it gives you a little bit more feedback than just the shin. And if it's hard to, um, to go down that far, then you take a chair. If the block's too low, then, then you'll take a chair, which is just, it's just a higher block. Or you can take two blocks, right? You can also, there's this set up here, right? So from Tadasana, just separate your legs. So start with the neck here by holding your arms up from your armpits, not your shoulders. Now it's everything else too. We do build up from the base. Balance evenly on your feet. Balance evenly on your feet. Thighs back. Compact the hips. Lengthen the groins. Front ribs back. Back ribs in. Then hold those arms up from the armpits so there's actually some freedom in your neck. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. 
Press your back heel, turn the front thigh, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. And then on your exhalation, come down. Take that, move the block so it's directly underneath your shoulder. And then take your top hand on your, on your. So we're gonna do, we're building from where we did uh, last time. Take the back thigh back from the hip, press the heel. Turn the front thigh out, the both outer knees to outer hips. Now take the front ribs back, take the back ribs in. Don't do one more than the other. Don't take the front ribs back and do a forward bend. Don't take the back ribs in and do a back bend. But can you do both so that you have the length in both the front and back sides of your body? Now I want you to add the lower hand. Rotate the forearm in and rotate the upper arm out. For some of you, you'll find that you actually get more length on the right side of your body when you do that from your hip to your armpit. And others may find that there's more space in the neck shoulder connection to the right side of the body. Some might find both, some might find neither. Now, as you do that, as you maintain that arm, take the front ribs back again, because they tend to pop forward. So front ribs back and kick the back ribs in too. And before you do the arm, take the head back. And imagine, don't, don't just turn the head, but imagine that there's a bar going through your temples. And someone's holding that bar and turning the head to look up. Someone's holding that bar and turning the head to look up. Did your upper arm turn in? Forearm in, upper arm out as the head goes up. Forearm in, upper arm out as the head goes up. Goes up. And if that's much for your neck, then certainly look forward. You don't have to do this but then extend the arm up. And then examine your body. Can you now spread the awareness? Are your legs doing what we spoke about? Is your torso doing what we spoke about? Are your arms doing what we spoke about? And now your head doing what we spoke about. And can you spread the awareness to each and every cell of your body? Pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet, take your hands on your hips for a moment. All right, there's a lot going on in this pose, right? Yes, triangle pose is one of the first poses we te teach. The book is 100 pages long. We have it out there, 100 pages long, just the one pose. Right foot and left leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch. Take the back thigh back, press the heel, turn the front thigh out. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips. Front ribs back, back ribs in, extend the arms. Hold your arms up from your armpits, not your shoulders. And exhale, come down. Use that block, the block goes right underneath your shoulder, take your left, uh, right hand on your hip. So don't, don't, don't turn your arm out. Don't turn your arm out like that, that Leanne. Fingertips forward, fingertips forward, because otherwise you're not gonna get the inner rotation of the forearm. So I'm not saying we know, we do teach that sometimes and that just teaches the upper arm rotating out, but I'm looking for the opposite actions today, which are gonna give a slightly different experience than just cranking the upper arm out, which is a fine way to do the pose as we teach it. I will teach that again. Back thigh back, press the heel. Turn the front thigh out, lift both outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips. Now take a snapshot, don't let that move. Take the front ribs back, back ribs in. Front ribs back. We tend to do more of a back bend here. So really take those front ribs back, but also allow the back ribs to go in. Now the bottom arm, rotate the forearm in, rotate the upper arm out, just like we just did on the floor, just like we were doing before in downward facing dog. There's weight bearing here, there's weight on the hand. So you should be able to really experience this. The whole torso is, is, is as if it's against the wall. Now take the head back, take the head back. If you can lean your whole torso back a little bit, Ramona, that would be good. Take the head back and then there's a bar going through your temples and you're turning that bar so that your eyes begin to gaze upward. Don't tuck the chin, don't tuck the chin, head back, that's it. And then if you'd like, extend the arm up. But keep everything else. Are your legs still working? Is your torso, front ribs back, back ribs in? as your forearm rotating in, upper arm rotating out. 
this, this is all therapy for the neck shoulders. Even though I didn't say neck, well, the turn of the neck. But we have been working directly with the neck, but this is all therapy for the neck shoulders. Pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. Tadasana. Separate your feet hip distance apart. Send your arms forward, arms up. Hold your elbows. Inhale, extend up. Exhale, come down. Balance evenly on your feet, thighs still pressing back, lifting the outer knees to the outer hips, lengthening from your, your uh, inner knees up through your inner groins. Move your hips towards the ceiling to let your torso fall over your thighs. Allow your elbows to draw towards the floor and then pull your elbows into your hands as if you're trying to move your elbows away from each other. It's a therapeutic action again in the neck shoulders. I don't know how we got into neck shoulders today, but I guess you can thank Leanne for tucking her chin. <laughs> and others. All right, let your arms go. Sweep your arms back. Extend your chest forward. Inhale, come up. Together, Tadasana. Uh, Virabhadrasana to warrior pose to fingertips up, bend your legs, jump for step. Drop the shoulders. Begin to hold your arms up with your armpits, not your shoulders. If you do the leg work and the torso work, it helps. Thighs back, compact the hips, because that gives a lift to the torso. Then lengthen the torso, front ribs back, back ribs in. Now your neck can release. Left foot in, right leg out. Press the back heel, turn the front thigh out. Inhale, on your exhalation, reach with your back arm as you bend the front leg. Weight is on your front heel, don't let that knee go past your leg. Uh, excuse me, don't let the knee go past your leg. Don't let the knee go past your ankle. Someone teach me English. The pandemic has not made my English any better. Lift the torso, lift the torso. Don't push your head forward, take your head Back, good Joe, that was good. Lengthen through the side ribs, drop the shoulders. And then reach through your back arm, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet. Other side, right foot and left leg out, front heel in line with your back arch. Press the back heel, turn the front thigh, lift the outer knees to the outer hips, drop the shoulder. Reach through that back arm as you bend the front leg. Don't let the knee go past the ankle. So knee over the ankle, thigh parallel to the floor is what we're going for. Have the weight on that front heel, not up pushing into the ball of the big toes or the ball of, balls of the toes. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips. Again, take that head back, take the head back. <clears throat> Lift the back arm, Joe, if you can, that's it. Hold the arms up from your armpits. Lift the side ribs, lift the chest to lower the shoulders. Reach through your back arm, <clears throat> straighten your front leg, parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. One more time, fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or step. So start here, legs, thighs back, compact the hips, lengthen the groins. Front ribs back, back ribs in. Left foot in, right leg out. Actually, let, let's everyone take hands on hips. Everyone take hands on hips. I'm in a good mood today. Thigh back, turn the front thigh out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Keep half the weight on the back heel. Bend the front leg. Half the weight on the back heel, half the weight on the front heel. Now, once we get here, the back leg tends to fall in. So take the back thigh back, press the back heel, Take the front knee in line with the hip. Not if you have replacement hips. But Karen, you should know how to protect yourself now. Now there's a tendency here for the top of the buttocks to come up and the front ribs to come back. The top of the buttocks does go down, but more than that, 
Take the front ribs back and then the back ribs in. Use the back ribs to lift your chest without doing a back bend. So front ribs back, back ribs in and up. Now extend the arms. Keep the front ribs back, back ribs in and up. Hold the arms up from the armpits. Gaze over your front fingertips. Observe your pose. Reach through the back arm, straighten your leg, parallel your feet, hands on hips. Take a breath. Right foot and left leg up. Front heel in line with your back arch. The back leg goes back, front thigh out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Compact those hips together. Started here, front ribs back, back ribs in and up. So that you feel a lifting of the, you don't want your torso to sink onto your pelvis. The torso has to lift up off of the pelvis. So maintain that as you exhale, bend the front leg. Half the weight stays on your back heel. Half the weight on your back heel, half the weight on your front heel. Now again, front rib back, back rib in. Take the belly button towards the back leg. So the torso is parallel to the front and back walls. Front ribs back, back ribs in and up. So those back ribs, which are doing the lift of the chest, and then maintain that to extend the arms. If I really get that work of the torso, I don't even have to say for, to myself, hold the arms up from the armpits because it happens. But you can check in with yourself. Gaze over your front fingertips. Front ribs back, back ribs in. Soft eyes. And then reach through your back arms, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet, jump your step your feet together. Separate your feet hip distance apart, arms forward, arms up. Watch those ribs. So even here, front ribs back, back ribs in and up. So the back ribs come in to lift the chest and the arms, but without shoving the front ribs forward, without hardening the diaphragm. So the front ribs have to stay back to keep that diaphragm soft. Hold your elbows the opposite way you did the first time. Stand up, inhale, exhale, come forward. So work the legs, thighs back, outer knees to outer hips, inner ankles to inner groins. Make sure you're not, not uh, falling into either the inner or outer foot, but the inner foot and the outer foot on both feet are equal. Hips up, let your torso fall over your thighs. Let the elbows move towards the floor and then pull your elbows away from each other, but into your hands. They're not really moving away from each other. And notice that therapeutic action on the shoulders, shoulder blade area. And most importantly here, let your skull release. Can you let your skull completely release and let go? Let your arms go, sweep your arms back, extend your chest forward. Inhale, come up, take your feet together. Tadasana. Tita Parjo Konasana, extend a side angle, side angle pose. You can use your blocks. I'm gonna have my blocks here. If you don't have blocks, instead of taking hand on the block, you take your forearm onto your thigh. Fingertips up, bend your legs down for step. So again, start here with the thighs back, outer knees to outer hips, lengthen the groins. Working up front ribs back, we've been working the back ribs in today. Left foot in, right leg up. Notice if anything changed. As soon as I did that, I felt my front ribs go forward. So front ribs back. Back ribs in and up. Inhale, exhale, bend the leg. 
Exhale, hand on the block. Left arm goes up, rotate that arm, reach up and extend over your ear. Press into that back heel, extend to that whole left side of the body. And reach through that arm and pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet over to the other side, right foot and left leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch. That back thigh goes back to press the back heel. Turn the front thigh out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Front ribs back, back ribs in, inhale, exhale, bend the leg. Front ribs back, back ribs in, inhale, exhale, hand on the block. Right arm up, rotate, reach up, extend over your ear. Keep pressing that back heel, that back thigh goes back. Extend through that whole right side of your body. And reach through that arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet, jump or step your feet together. All right, lots of the standing. This is the standing poses for today, unless I change my mind. But th this is gonna put everything together, okay? Everything we've been working on comes together here. So fingertips up, watch those blocks. Uh, don't, don't jump into them. So jump or step, but if they're in your way, just step, that's fine. So thighs back. Compact those hips, lengthen the groins. Front ribs back, back ribs in. Left foot and right leg out. Adjust again, back thigh back, front thigh out, compact the hips, lengthen the groins. Front ribs back, back ribs in. Inhale, reach to the back arm as you exhale down the front leg. Next exhalation, hand on the block, and then take your left hand on your hip. So the back thigh goes back, press the, press the heel. The knee, front knee, in line with your hip. Now we say lean back and there is, is a leaning back, but can you, do, can you still take the front ribs back, back ribs forward? And as the back ribs go forward, they extend the chest, they extend up through the chest. But don't just throw the front ribs forward too. So front ribs back, back ribs in, and lean back against the wall and take your head against that wall. Now there's the lower arm, we worked in triangle pose. Rotate the forearm and rotate the upper arm out. Rotate the forearm and rotate the upper arm out. Front ribs back, back ribs in still. Head is back. Now extend the arm up, rotate it, and reach it over your ear. Study. Examine your pose. The instructions are done. Now it's time to examine. Now it's time to study. Pull yourself up and out. Parallel the feet. Right foot in, left leg out. This is it. Not it, it, it for the standings. Back thigh back, press the back heel, turn the front thigh out, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Front ribs back, back ribs in. Start it here. Keep the front ribs back, back ribs in. Exhale, bend the leg. Keep the front ribs back, back ribs in. Exhale, hand on the block. Right hand on hip. And then begin to adjust what we lose in the transitions. And, and, and we all do. So take that back thigh back from the hip, press the heel. Take the front knee back so it's in line with the hip. Take the front ribs back, back ribs in. I should compact the hips together. Front ribs back, back ribs in. And lean then the whole torso back. Not just a part of it, but can you have it lean back in one unit while maintaining the front ribs back, back ribs in. And let the head go back as well. Really allow that, that head to open so that there's freedom in the neck. It begins to look up slightly. But if you do it, it begins to look up on its own even. And you, and you can, I mean, the neck does turn here. But see what adjustments you make to the torso, which just caused the neck to turn. And then finish the pose, extend the arm up, turn it, extend over your ear. 
but keep the front ribs back, back ribs in, keep pressing that back heel. Oh, I didn't say the arm, so forearm in, upper arm out. Now you have to add it, lower arm, forearm in, upper arm out, add it. And observe your pose. Reach through the arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet, jump or step your feet together. All right, take the blocks off of you. Downward facing dog, Some hands and knees. Forearm in, forearms in, upper arms out. Even here, front ribs towards the back body, back ribs moving towards, in, in and up towards your chest. Toes under, straighten your legs. Inhale, exhale, last downward facing dog. Let the head hang. <clears throat> Thighs back. Push your hands to move into the legs. Pull your legs to move into the legs. Thighs back, lengthen the groins. Outer knees to outer hips. Let the head go. Let the head hang. Front ribs back, back ribs in. And bend your legs, come into child's pose. If that floor is far, take a block, rest your head. Study, study the experience of your practice. Skull resting. Can you really rest the skull? Take your hands underneath your shoulders, push to come up. Lie back. Lie back with your legs bent, feet on the floor. Take your arms out to the sides like a T. Bend your legs into your chest. Extend through the left fingertips. Keep the left shoulder blades down. Take your knees towards your right elbow. Keep the thighs together. Press into the right shoulder to keep the left shoulder down. Turn your abdomen to the left as the knees go to the right. Slowly inhale and come up. Place your feet on the floor, square your hips and square your shoulders. Bend your legs back into your chest. Extend through the right fingertips, take your knees towards the left. Fingertips are a part of the pose. Keep the left shoulder, push down through the left shoulder to keep the right shoulder, shoulder blade down. <clears throat> and turn the abdomen to the right as the knees go to the left. Holy inhale, come up. Take your feet on the floor, square your hips and square your shoulders. Bend your legs into your chest, hold around your shins or behind your knees. Give yourself a little hug here. Say something kind to yourself. And take your hands to the face of your knees. <clears throat> so separate your hands around the face of your knees. Inhale, let your legs move away from you just two, three inches. Hands still stay on them. Exhale, draw the thighs towards you. So inhale, let the legs move away. Exhale, draw them towards you. You're not fighting with your legs, just gentle. You're releasing the back. Inhale, let the legs come towards you. Exhale, the legs go away. 
Just gentle, two, three inch movements, just massaging the lower back, massaging the abdomen. On your next inhalation, let your feet go to the floor. Take your hands to the top of the buttocks, scoop the flesh towards your heels, straighten your legs one at a time. <clears throat> Take your arms out to the sides. <clears throat> Let go. Let go. Rest your eyes into your cheekbones. Let your arms, your legs flow away from your torso <clears throat> as if they are detaching, releasing, letting go. Let the torso release and see if you can create an evenness of your imprint into the mother earth below you that there's an evenness on the left and right sides of your body. And all of your facial features release and relax, relaxing your forehead. Relaxing your eyebrows. Relaxing your eyelids and eyelashes. Relaxing your nose. Release, relax your cheekbones. Please relax your cheeks. Please relax your lips, top lip, bottom lip, corners of your lips. Let your tongue rest on the lower palate, soften the inside of your mouth. Let your jawbone release. The bone moves away from the bones of your skull more and more as time goes on. Release, relax the way back of your tongue as you release, relax your throat. Let go everything, hold nothing. Let go everything, hold nothing. Let go. Surrender. Shavasana.
Slowly deepen the inhalation and lengthen the exhalation. Move your toes, move your nose. Bend your legs, place your feet on the floor, knees together, feet apart. Take your hands onto your abdomen and your chest. And pick a side, extend your arm past your ear, roll to that side. Rest your ear into your upper arm. And when you feel ready, take your top hand, place it on the floor in front of your heart, turn your torso towards the floor, push to come up. Come up chest first, head last. Come up to sit in. If you're sitting cross-legged, cross your legs the opposite way. Bring your palms together. Draw your eyes back and down as you turn the corners of your lips up. Observing your practice. Offering gratitude to those practicing together, allowing us to be a community together. Let's close by chanting one collective OM. Deep inhalation. Gently let your eyelids open. Big smile. Namaste. Bow to the divine within you. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone who's here. So grateful to have you here. Thank you, everybody at home. Come down when you can. When you feel safe, we would love to have you. Or when you fly back to the country for those that are out of the country. Thank you, Jonathan, very much. It was excellent. I hear somebody. Say it again. Thank you, Jonathan, it was excellent. Oh, you're so very welcome. So happy to have you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice to see you, Carolyn. Thank you, you too. And we'll be in the park on Friday also, Friday at noon. Bye, everyone. Take care. <laughs> Check that to um, me, Jonathan, okay? It's, it's Mill Run Park. It's, it's just up the block there. All right, bye everyone online.